Hello and welcome to another episode of Tiffin Tips, the RV journey where we teach you, the owner, a little bit more about Tiffin Motorhomes and all the features and functionality of our product. Today I'm very excited to welcome a special guest, Mr. Lincoln Morani with Spider Controls Corporation. Welcome, Lincoln. Thank you. Uh, Lincoln is a design systems integrator that really focuses on integrating the multiplex package with the Tiffin body build. And today we're gonna to walk you through all the features and functionality of a 2023 Allegro bus multiplex system. So take it away. Okay, thank all you. Right. This is a brief overview of the spider system in a 2023 Allegro bus. The spider system can be found across all Tiffin models and while some of the functions and features may be different in this bus, um, the core concepts and uh, features that you would find will also apply to all of Tiffin's units. With that being said, let's take a look at the main screen in this motorhome located here in the hallway. Okay, so located here in the middle of the motorhome is the central uh, screen where you can control everything in your motorhome. Uh, bear in mind that this is not the only place to control everything. However, with this being the master screen, you would find all of your functions um, located in this, on this screen. Um, there are other screens located throughout the motorhome for convenience. Uh, they may not have every single feature on it, but they would have features that are pertinent to that location in the motorhome. So you can see at a glance, the important information is provided to you. Um, right here, you can see at the top on the home page, uh, we have um, exterior temperature, bay temperature, and time. As well as you can see here, a demonstration of the fault system. It can tell you if there's a fault with the system and display that here by that orange triangle. But you can see here, just a quick overview, house batteries, chassis batteries. If they're green, they're good. If they're red, then they may need some attention. You can see how much power you're drawing. If you're on generator, inverter, in this case, we're on shore power, but you can see just how easy it is to get a quick status update of your motorhome. Um, so right here, again, we've got power information at the top. In the center, we've got some HVAC information. You can see your floor heat levels, uh, temperatures for your rear, mid, and front zone. Here you've got tank information and then some miscellaneous items like for generator, aqua hot, water pump, and some lights that are in, or in this uh, area of the motorhome um, close to this touchscreen. At the bottom here, you can see we've got jump pages uh, to go to each different page. That would be for your lights, electrical, HVAC, slides, and so on. Um, and that's a brief overview of the main screen. But we can take a look now at some of the the more uh, specific pages that handle um, a lot of the specific items and loads. For example, if we were to um, go to the lighting page to control our lights, we can just tap here on this lighting icon. And now you can see we have access to every single light that is in this motorhome. So you can see right now, just uh, quickly um, looking at the screen here, you can see what lights are on and what lights are off. And you can easily tell that by looking for the blue status around the button. Um, on this version here, you can see blue status means the light is on. And if you press the button, it turns gray. You can see the light rays around the light bulb disappear. Well, that tells you that the light is off. You can also look at the light to verify that it's off. Uh, but that's a quick way to tell if your light is on or off. You can see here I'm turning lights on. Now to dim a light, you can easily dim a light by just pressing and holding on the button like this. And you get a pop-up that allows you then to adjust the brightness based on a slider. And once you find uh, your desired brightness level, you can press done. And when you look at your light, your light will be at the dim level. 
can also see a status here of dots that indicate the brightness level for that light. Of course, you can see here the lights are split up in zones. So you've got your main zone, bed zone, bath zone, and exterior zone. And you can control uh, the master for each zone with this button right here. So you can see I just turned off that bank of 10 lights with the press of one button. And that this applies to every single zone as well. So the system has the ability to also tell you if there's an issue with uh, a circuit. For example, if you tried to turn on a light and it didn't turn on, and you noticed that the ring around the button turned red, then that would indicate that there's an issue with that circuit and it needs attention. So there's features like that that's built into the system to indicate and provide information to you uh, to help you understand what's happening if there's an issue. So now that we've taken a look at the lights, let's take a look at the electrical page and walk through some of the functions and features on that page. We'll press the electrical symbol here for the electrical page. And you can see we've broken it down into two main sections. So at the top here, you have your DC section, which provides information for all the direct current items in this motorhome. So we have the solar charger at the top, house battery, and chassis batteries. Right here, you can see we have the AC section, and this governs information regarding the inverter, uh, the charger, your generator, and your incoming power from shore. So just like we saw on the home page, uh, you can see a quick overview of your house battery status. In this unit, it's showing you a state of charge in percentage. So currently the house batteries are at 81%. That correlates to a 12.2 voltage in the battery. Here you can see currently you're discharging. We're discharging at 39 amps and we can also see the status of the chassis battery. It's currently at 12 volts. There's a merge status here as well that's grayed out, but when the coach is in a merged status where both battery banks are merged together, you would see that let light up in yellow. Here for the AC section, you can see the inverter is currently disabled. The charger is also disabled, and that makes sense because we don't see any power flowing from the charger up into the batteries. Again, as you can see with these arrows here, they show the direction of power flow. So the arrows pointing away from the battery indicate that power is leaving the battery, which correlates with that discharge number. But you can also see here the arrows um, from the EMS section going to the inverter charger and then above that are grayed out, which means there's no power flowing there. So that correlates to what we're seeing here and makes sense. This section here um, pertains to the EMS or energy management system, which is an intuitive and uh, smart system to help the coach manage its elect electrical load based on its incoming power. So for example, if we had a case where we were currently on 30 amp service, the coach can draw a lot more power than just 30 amps. Um, if it were to do that, it would cause the shore breaker to trip. And that'd be a nuisance thing because you'd have to go back outside uh, turn the breaker back on, come back inside, and then manually manage your loads. Well, e EMS, what it does is it knows how much power your coach is drawing and how much each of these systems is drawing, and it calculates based on the incoming power. It calculates what it needs to do to manage the coach's load to stay within the incoming uh, power so it doesn't trip the shore breaker. So that's EMS. Um, you can also turn EMS off if you don't want it on, just by the press of a button. Now you've disabled that entire function. And here I just enabled it. And then in the bottom here, we've got generator, so you can start and stop your generator. You've got AGS settings here. And you can go in and, and customize your AGS. Um, and then here is the information for your transfer switch. It provides information on line one and line two. Um, and then shore power just lets you know if you're on 50 amp service or 30 amp service or below. Now let's take a look at the HVAC system. So we'll press the snowflake and that takes us to the HVAC system. So at the top you can see right off the bat, you know, we try to make this intuitive. We've got the floor heat settings here. 
and if you want to control the different zones in the motorhome you can just press on either the rear mid or front zone in the motorhome um, you can see right off the top there uh, it gives you the temperature and current set point for that zone so to increase and decrease your temperature you can press this up arrow to increase the temperature or the blue arrow down arrow to decrease your temperature you can also adjust the temperature with the slider slide to the left to decrease your temperature or you can slide to the right to increase your temperature and then down here you have controls for your air conditioner heat pump furnace your fan speeds and aqua hot settings if you want aqua hot electric diesel or preheat or your actual aqua hot settings you can access those with that button there okay. moving on from the HVAC page let's take a look at the slide page on the slide page it gives you a nice overview of everything required to operate your slides. Um, there are safeties involved because slides are um, a safety item. So there's some criteria that needs to be met, which we indicate here on the top of the screen. Uh, so you must have your ignition in the on position and your park brake set before you can run your slides. If either of these conditions are not met, the ring around the ignition or park brake will be it will be red instead of green and you'll get an X here under your slides ready box the info center is helpful to provide information as to why the slide isn't running uh, so if we didn't have ignition or we did not have the part brake set and you went to run the slide you would see information show up in the info center that would provide clear text a clear text reason as to why the slides are not running Okay, moving on from the slide page, let's take a look at the shade page. And this page is very similar to the light page where it shows you every single shade within the motorhome. And you can control them via masters or individually. And again, they're grouped based on uh, different zones. So you have cockpit shades here for the night shades, day shades, and then main shades as well. Again, night shades and day shades. Um, operation is simple. You just press the up arrow to raise a shade and if you want to lower that shade just press the down arrow okay so now that we've taken a look at the shades let's take a look at the mechanical page and uh, on this page you'll find controls for your vent fans your locks lifts and the ceiling fan in the bedroom so very simple and intuitive here uh, you can turn your fan on and off with the press of a button uh, you also have the option to control the speed of the fan via slider as you can see here. Um, the lid, you can open and close the lid with that button. And on some of these units, depending on where the fan is placed, you can control the airflow if you want to have an exhaust or intake. With the press of that button, you can quickly change that. Um, down here, you've got some locks for your entry door lock, bay door lock, um, and lifts. In this case, this motorhome has a TV lift. You can control your TV lift here. With the press of a button, your TV lift will raise. And ceiling fan in the bedroom controls here for high speed, low speed, or off. Okay, now that we've taken a look at the main functions and features of the main panel, let's take a quick and brief look at the diagnostics and settings page on the main panel. So on settings here, you can see quick access if you want to change your uh, temperature units. You can do so here in a settings page, screen brightness, adjust your time, and, uh, and so on. We also have on this unit an exterior keypad, and um, that allows us to change different features. And for example, here the door pin code, you can change that here. Um, system update, the wireless switches, and so on. You can find all that information and those settings here in the settings page. More importantly, this system also provides diagnostic information which you have access to with this diagnostics button and this provides a very uh, high level overview of each system pertaining to the spider system in this motor home as well as some third-party um, systems as well for example inverter charger and sea level system and so on but it gives you a quick overview if you see greens here then uh, that's a really good indication that everything is working. Um, it even tells you if a circuit is on or off. Uh, you can verify that just by looking here. Um, 
and as well as faults. In this case, you can see we've simulated that the inverter charger is offline. Um, and one nice thing about the system is that it lists all the diagnostic information in plain text versus some systems might have like a, a code that you have to decode. Well, here they're displayed in plain text English uh, that makes it very easy to understand and troubleshoot with a tech if necessary. Now that we've taken a look at the main screen in the motorhome, let's take a look at one of the smaller screens located in a different zone in the motorhome. So again, we've got uh, touch screens located throughout the motorhome in convenient locations. In this example, let's take a look at the galley location. This screen is going to control the uh, lights and functions that are within this area. So as you can quickly see, we can easily turn on and off different lights in this area. Um, we also have water pump access as you're washing dishes. If you want to turn that water pump on, you've got a button for that right there. Um, the galley fan controls on a different page are found here. Uh, you've also got some uh, controls for the shade that are located right here in the galley area, as well as some settings information. But you can see it's just a, a, a quick and easy way to control circuits here in this galley location. Um, as well as you've got some time information there at the top, uh, so some useful information um, right at a glance. So we just took a look at the main screen inside the motorhome that provided a lot of information pertaining to items within the motorhome. Um, outside the motorhome, there is a screen as well that provides information um, that would be important for uh, things that are happening outside the motorhome. So let's take a look at that real quick. Okay, so we can wake up the screen by touching the screen and you can see there's a, a page here. Uh, you gotta swipe up to unlock. And we can enter the password. Okay, that opens to the page here where you have access to uh, certain functions and features, mainly for the exterior of the motorhome. So you can quickly control your porch light, door light, road light, and you know if you're coming into your motorhome at night, you can just quickly press your light master to turn on all the lights inside your motorhome. You've also got access to uh, functions for your door awning. You can lock and unlock your entry door or unlock and lock your bay door. You can also lock your screen which would completely lock out the screen from anyone else who's trying to access your motorhome. There's also a security feature here that'll lock down your coach uh, so that if someone tried to access or enter your coach without authorized access it'll sound the alarm system uh, to scare them off. Wow, thank you for that, Lincoln. I can tell you, I certainly learned a few things. I'm sure even the most experienced owners out there got some tips and takeaways from your session today. So we really appreciate your time. We really appreciate the partnership between Tiffin Motorhomes and Spider Controls. And we look forward to watching the technology evolve even more in the future.